Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer is a cancer that arises from the lining of the uterus, also called endometrium. It is the fourth common female cancer after breast, colon, and lung cancer. Endometrial CA is more common in postmenopausal women, and it consists of 30% out of all the gynecological malignancies. The mean age of diagnosis is around 54 years old. There are two main types of endometrial cancer, which are type 1 and type 2. So type 1 is more common, where it consists of 90% of all the cases. And for type 1, the range of age is younger, which is 55 to 65 years old, whereas type 2 is more common in 65 to 75 years old. For the clinical features, type 1 is due to unopposed estrogen, obesity, hypertension, or diabetes mellitus. Whereas for type 2, the clinical features are atrophy and a thin physique. The morphology of type 1 endometrial cancer is endometroid type, whereas for type 2, it consists of serous type, clear cell, and also malignant mixed malarian tumor type. The precursor for type 1 is endometrial hyperplasia, whereas for type 2, it is endometrial intraepithelial carcinoma. The behavior of spread is mainly lymphatic spread in type 1, whereas type 2, it consists of aggressive intraperitoneal spread and also lymphatic spread. Overall, the prognosis for type 1 is better than type 2. The causes of endometrial cancer are hyperestrogenism, where there is unopposed estrogen causing endometrial hyperplasia, and then it later on becomes atypical hyperplasia, then further progresses to endometrial cancer. So the causes of hyperestrogenism can be endogenous or exogenous cause. Endogenous cause will be, for example, obesity, or if there is an estrogen-producing tumor, such as granulosa cell tumor, or in cases of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Whereas the exogenous cause include hormone replacement therapy and also tamoxifen therapy. Other causes of endometrial cancer are like Hash and PCC, which is the hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome. And these cases are due to mutation of mismatch repair genes and are often associated with colorectal, ovarian, and endometrial tumors. The risk factors, so these are the people who are at an increased risk of having endometrial cancer. For example, obesity, where there is conversion of androgens to estrogen in adipose tissue, especially in postmenopausal women. Diabetes mellitus, nulliparous, where the woman had prolonged exposure to estrogen. Late menopause, after 52 years old. Unopposed estrogen therapy, tamoxifen therapy, and hormone replacement therapy. And also, we should ask whether she had a family history of colorectal cancer or ovarian cancer. The symptoms differ for postmenopausal women and premenopausal women. For postmenopausal women, those women who have had achieved their menopause, they may present with postmenopausal bleeding, which is abnormal, or they may also present with irregular vaginal bleeding. Whereas for women who are still on their menstrual periods, they may have intermenstrual bleeding, blood stained vaginal discharge, heavy menstrual bleeding lower abdominal pain or dyspareunia, which is pain during sexual intercourse. And there are also some patients who are at a later stage of endometrial cancer They may present with advanced stage symptoms, such as bone pain, suggesting bony metastasis, or jaundice, suggesting liver meds, and they may even present with respiratory symptoms like coughing or shortness of breath, where it suggests metastasis to the lungs. On physical examination, we should do an abdominal examination, speculum examination to rule out other causes of bleeding arising from the vagina and cervix. Bimanual examination may reveal an enlarged uterus in endometrial cancer. However, the uterus is usually not significantly enlarged. For investigation, the mainstay of diagnosis will include a transvaginal ultrasound, used to assess the endometrial thickness and also to look at the ovaries. We can also do a hysteroscopy if the endometrium thickness is more than 5 millimeter. 
and this hysteroscopy can be done in outpatient or can be done in inpatient under general anesthesia. So the hysteroscopy will allow a direct visualization of the whole endometrium and also allows a directed biopsy to be performed. So usually we can do a hysteroscopy together with biopsy for histological examination. And take note that endometrial cancer can only be diagnosed by a histological examination of biopsy. And there are different types of endometrial sampling, which includes papal sampling, dilation and curettage, or hysteroscopy guided biopsy. Blood investigation that can be done are full blood count to assess the hemoglobin level to rule out anemia due to chronic vaginal bleeding, renal profile to exclude ureteral obstruction, and liver function test to exclude liver metastasis. Other investigation to assess for metastasis include chest x-ray to exclude lung mats, ultrasound of the abdomen, CT scan or MRI to assess the extent of the disease, cystoscopy, barium studies, and also sigmoidoscopy. This is for the bladder and the colon. So this is the staging, FIGO staging, for endometrial cancer. There are four stages. Stage 1 is divided into 1A and 1B. So stage 1 is the endometrial cancer is confined to the uterine body. 1A is less than 50% invasion of myometrium. 1B is more than 50% invasion of myometrium. Stage 2 is if the tumour invades the cervical stroma. Stage 3, where there is local and regional spread of the tumour. It can be divided into 3A, 3B and 3C. 3A is if it invades the serosa of uterus and or to the fallopian tubes, ovaries and ligaments of the uterus. 3B invade vagina and parametrium. 3C metastasis to the pelvic and or paraiotic nodes. Stage 4 is the later stage where there is invasion of the bladder and bowel or distant metastasis, which are the 4A and 4B. <coughs> so the management will depend on the figure staging and the extent of the disease. So the mainstay of management would be surgery, which will require a preoperative evaluation and counselling to the patient about the reason we need to do surgery, any alternative treatment, the complication of the treatment, success rate, and explain about the surgery she has. So this is a summary of the management. For stage 1A, we can do a TAPSO, which is a total abdominal hysterectomy with bilateral sapingo oophorectomy plus peritoneal washing for cytology. Stage 1B is TAPSO plus radiotherapy. And stage 2, where the tumor invades the cervical stroma, we can do a radical hysterectomy plus dissection of the pelvic and aortic limb nodes, also called as Wertheim hysterectomy. Stage 3, surgical debulking if operable. Otherwise, we do a neoadjuvant. We do a radiotherapy and then surgery. Whereas stage 4, where there is invasion of bladder or bowel or distant metastasis, we offer a systemic chemotherapy or hormonal therapy, depending on where the metastasis is. So these are some of the adjuvant treatment, which includes post-operative radiotherapy. This can reduce the vagina and pelvic recurrence rate, but does not affect the survival rate. And it can become the primary mode of treatment if the patient is unfit for surgery. Chemotherapy given in cases of metastatic disease. And hormonal therapy is a form of palliative care, which includes high-dose progesterone. The prognosis of endometrial CA depends on the tumor type, whether type 1 or type 2, type 1 has a better prognosis and depends on the stage and also depends on the grade of tumour. So this is the 5 year survival for the different stages where the survival rate will be higher if detected at an earlier stage. Overall, the 5 year survival rate is around 80%. So that's all for this video, thank you.